Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we smash apart the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one-minute chunks so we can analyze them in scrupulous detail. I'm Kai Olson from the Road to Infinity podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And do you remember going shopping for clothes as a kid? I do. I know mean, we spent a lot of time in Sears. Oh, Sears yeah, was a Sears. big place for getting clothes right. back in the 70s and 80s. I want to say we went to a place called Rackison's, mm, okay. northeastern Pennsylvania. My okay. brother and I. Now, my so you know my mom. God, I love my mom, right? <laughs> you know, my mom would take us, and you know, you'd always have that thing where your mom would like, you know, you should find something, right. and then she'd hold it up to you, and then she'd hold it up to your you know, like my to my brother, like you know, sister, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, let me see if this will fit you. Will uh-huh. this fit John? And will this fit Robert? Right? And you know, you're always kind of like, even as a kid, and I and I was a I was a very I was a very large kid, right? As I'm a large adult, mm. and I, I totally get that, and, and I'd always be like, mom, like you know. Like yeah, holding up a shirt to me to yeah. like see if this that's ridiculous. Stop that. Let me go in the dressing room and <laughs> yeah. do it in the privacy of that, right? <laughs> because nobody wants that done. No. Nobody wants that done in the middle of a farmer's market either. No, especially not in Chiapas, <laughs> Mexico. And the- especially <laughs> Dang you, Bruce Banner. Yeah. Not behind someone's back. Yeah, not cool, Bruce. Not, not cool. Even though, okay, we understand you've yeah, been well, destitute you got for some, the... You have, a, you have a condition. For the last few days. Son, you have a condition. You've hit rock bottom, so I yeah. give you a bit of a pass. But yeah. This has a lot to do with Minute 32. It does. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about Minute 32 of Louis Leterrier's 2008 Incredible Hulk movie. I, I, and see, we, we actually misspoke. I forgot that the kid doesn't give him the money until this one. So Bruce oh. is begging on the street. Well, that's why it's even more horrendous. Yeah, right, because at the end, the end of last minute, he's just begging. And this one actually is a lighter thing. A kid actually comes by and drops a couple of paces. What an awesome breaking yeah. point, too, right? Because yeah. like we end the last minute, we're just... Bruce is just there. We right. remember he's begging now. He's crumpled in a, in a mass in the middle of a, what looks to be like a farmer's market. Mm-hmm. Kid sees him, looks at him pathetically, walks away. Yeah, and it looks like, and the kids, don't, I mean, he could walk by with the family, but like, it seems like he gives him his own money. Oh. So once again, the kindness of strangers, like the people go, people kid. of Guatemala and now the people of Mexico showing pity on this, this what looks like a strung out junkie. I mean, street. that is, I mean, I mean not, no, if, right? I mean, like, that is right. what it looks we like. We talked about this in the previous minute, but I mean, really, I think they're hitting that note pretty hard in this, too, because, like, yes. you know, in this, he's, as we're going to see, he's sleeping on the street, he's having nightmares, like, he's, I mean, he's, th- this is really playing the, the falling off the wagon card pretty hard in this minute. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's really nothing else more to I mean, say, right? Right, like, exactly. It's not his, it's not really, it's not, the analogy is not perfect because it's not something, I mean, Bruce did originally experiment on himself but for altruistic reasons and this is not something he didn't he didn't like trigger the hulk to come well, exactly out. so it's something that happens so it's the, like i said the, the metaphor is a little strange and the, and here look at like okay i mean clearly but they are playing those notes in this to go into a, a a serious part of this is that obviously there are people in our society in our neighborhoods everything that are mm-hmm. afflicted by a lot of these issues sure and you would hope now, maybe not in this part of Mexico or Guatemala, are there readily available services, but we understand that. We even know today, mm-hmm. people, for a lot of different reasons, either can't use those services or don't have access to them or don't have ability to go there, or they've stumbled and fall again to where those services become a problem. Yeah. Here, though, he is in a situation where the first thing you have to do when you go to one of these services is, who are you? Mm-hmm. Well, he can't he do can't that. He can't do that. No. So he can't. That's the thing. It's like, why did you just go to the embassy? Well, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, exactly. You're yeah. not going to. Ha- he's a fugitive from no, the law. I that's mean, like, not what he's going to do. Right. So it even adds on more to the whole piling on of his situation and how yeah. horrible it is. This yeah. kid, though, yeah. way to go, kid. Right. Because in this situation, you've, you have single handedly yeah. saved the future <laughs> of the universe. That's true. <laughs> I say like these between him and uh, the guy driving the banana truck, which once again we don't have names for any of these characters. Or, what a wonderful tale right? of how little acts of kindness uh-huh. well, can help can to create a better universe. That's right. And this and this child's name, his act, uh, acting name, we couldn't find it. Wait, he's yeah, not even. He's not even listed. He's uncredited in the in the, in the, uh, in the on IMDb. Kid who saves the universe. Kid who saves the universe, and like still we don't know who that actor's name is. So. Come on. I hope, he, I hope he's having a very happy life knowing so, that he, yes, in, the, so, in the MCU, save the universe and outside where that... He, and whatever he's doing in life right now. Yeah. Way to go. Right. So Bruce, so, he looks up, he yeah. gets the pesos. This is, I mean, I gotta say, this is gorgeous. I mean, like the, we've seen a lot of like inside the bottling plant, like very dark and stuff too, but like there's this just, I mean, I don't know if this is an actual market. This is another, they shot in Rio, but I'm not sure if this, I think this is an actual market that they shot at. I don't know if this is something they, they put together. They, 
Uh, they have wildly diverged from what's going on on screen in the commentary, so they don't really talk about that. However, uh, one thing I can say is one of the things that we, we find with Louis Leterrier is that he likes cranes, and so we have a really nice crane shot here. Another, so, another sweeping shot. Yeah, another Even sweep. just... Uh, yeah, exactly. Just, I mean, basically, he's just moving around a tree to spot Bruce at a stand, and he has it on a crane, so he's, like, moving in two directions at the same time, so we have this nice little, you know, this slow, sweeping movement to discover him. So this is a, w- pesos. a wonderfully lit. I mean, oh, yeah, even though it's yeah. even though it's outdoor during the day the in this market, colors all over the place. It's incredibly well lit. Here's something I th- noticed though in terms of the story. Mm-hmm. This may be the brightest, most colorful scene yet in the movie. Yeah, I because would say even so. though we saw the density of where he was living, yeah, nothing was ever this bright or this this colorful. Yeah, because. What is ha- what's going to happen to Bruce? This is the turning point for the Bruce's character. Oh, yeah, character. that's right. Things are actually getting better for him. Yes. Here. Yeah. And it's all shown within the environment and everything you see in the scene. Yeah. That's awesome. So we get, we get a little light comedy. I say light comedy because he does something that's not really very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he, we, we discovered him shopping, so he's spending his pesos on clothes, which is smart. I mean, yes. at, at the very least, you know, to people, more people will help you if you look better. I'm, uh, it's However, ironic, isn't do you it? know what I think is funny is? Okay, yeah. so we have this great sweeping shot of him. It's this wide shot, and you can see him on the right side of the screen. Yeah. He's at a used clothing mm-hmm. stand. Yeah. And in the foreground is a shirtless guy uh-huh. with a backpack right, on. Just wandering around. <laughs> Wait, what I laugh about this is, is that... We're cutting to this idea that well, you can't walk around shirtless, <laughs> there's, dude. There's yeah, like dudes all over the right place there. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's it's hot in Mexico. Like you can you can get away with it. It'd be fine. But he's trying to make himself look more respectable. So uh, he has, he gets a shirt and it looks good. And then he asks for some pants and gives them to him. And it looks like jeans. Some yeah. or dark blue pants, whatever. Just nice pants. Uh, and then he sort of pulls on a little bit, like, uh, yeah, I don't know if the waist is going to really work on this. And then he's like, well, it's stretch. And there's a heavy set woman nearby. And so he measures the pants against her without her knowledge. Uh, uh, and then basically realizes that, like, if he gets bigger, he's they're not going to fit him. So, so then, what does he need? Stretchy. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes Str- back and asks. And he for says stretchy. the one word. Now that's not a trans. Doesn't translate, yeah, right? I guess. Right. Or is that the universal word for? Yeah, does everybody knows stretchy. Your yeah. Thanksgiving pants. Right. <laughs> right. Stretchy pants, <laughs> which I'm very familiar. I understand, right? Those right. are comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the, so, that's the around the okay. house pants. <laughs> it is. It is a bit of. It is a bit of. It is an attempt at humor. It is. It doesn't. It hasn't aged well, has no, it? <laughs> no. It's just like. Mm. That's okay. not cool. And once again, we're going to bring up like we just said about the kid. Yeah. And what's this this nice woman's name who uh, allowed herself to her backside to be used in no the idea. scene? Again, what? not credited. I tell you, there's a, like uh, as we're going through there, and uh, maybe uh, this is this is where I feel like I have failed you as a as a podcast host. I looked, man. Like I I looked at multiple resources, and IMDb is so dominant in this thing that everybody refers back to them. So even when I go to like, I can find stunt people because there actually are a couple of stunt pages where people have put up who they are. But for extras and and that kind of stuff, even if you have a single line nothing i just want to say to whoever this person is yeah awesome you're in the movie yeah i know this was not the the most uh, uh glamorous uh, it, yeah Hollywood it wasn't experience. the greatest scene to be in right yeah. but awesome but i have a do have another issue with this scene okay not only is it not great i mean it's you know it's a it's a cheap play, it's, play it's, it's a it's a, it's a so gr- we have it's a, a huge order of a joke well we have a huge continuity error Oh, so here we are. We see the scene. He is using both hands to d- compare the size of the pants to her. Sure. And his existing rag pants have not fallen down. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're right. What Whoa. happened? We've established that he can't go anywhere without clutching yeah. the rags he's, he's wearing. He's wearing the new shirt he just bought, and he's clearly wearing the rags because yeah. they're beat up, and you can tell. Yeah. He must have gotten a rope at some point. <laughs> Anyway, the, <laughs> the, the, the the funny part of this is okay. Yes, it's it's played. Yeah. The, the laughter is played for yeah, she pulls stretchy. Up the pants and she pulled and he, he says, sees them perfecto, perfecto. And and okay, and his face yeah. it lights up. I yeah. mean, it's actually really great because we haven't seen Bruce Banner. We haven't seen his face light up in a tiny little right. moment of. Oh, <laughs> One yay. thing I have not figured out uh, in this minute is if he was able to find shoes. 
because it, like at the stand there doesn't seem to be any. But so the next shot we see him sleeping on the street, and he has added a, a windbreaker, like a, a blue sort of members only kind of jacket. Oh, yes. uh, over the top, so he's got brown like khakis. Even though there, that's another continuity error, it's not. Like, she I was just going to say, holds up stretchy, stretchy gray pants, and the very next shot is him in khakis. <laughs> he got which another are not pair of stretchy, stretchy pants, pants. That she uh, and then it added, has added a windbreaker as well, like a, a, a light jacket, and he is sleeping on the street. Uh, there's a bunch of. Um, a graffiti on the side, I couldn't find in translations for, for most of that. It uh, just seems to be most people's names and things. Um, and, but as he's sleeping on the street, and this is this is really leaning into the, the addict off the wagon kind of thing, I thought, is he's having like a you know traumatic nightmare, too, as he's sleeping on the street and gets right. woken up, too. And so we, it, very, very fast, but as you slow it down, the two shots you see are Blonsky with his weapon aimed right at his at, at Bruce's face, essentially, or, or basically straight down the barrel, like looking into camera and his fire. And then it cuts to a shot from the Hulk's first appearance of Betty knocked out after the accident in the lab, uh, where she's on the ground and she's bloody. So he's really put those two things together of like, yes, I'm going home, but I'm also putting Betty in the crosshairs. That, and I'm also going back to finally confronting yeah. that which I fear. The because I hurt. What are these two things? Are they connected? I'm fearful. Yeah. I'm fearful of what's going to happen yeah. when I confront this aggression towards me. Right. And I'm fearful of how it will impact Betty. Yeah. And so then he wakes up from this from this nightmare. So then you have a shot of him walking through the jungle, like on a path and stuff too. But I cannot tell, even blew it up, I cannot tell if he actually is wearing shoes or not. He's got to be wearing something. I would hope so. I mean, like he's like you can see, there's there's the khakis again, and there's the, the, the shirt and the windbreaker. So he's in the same clothes, obviously. But I can't tell if those are just light-colored shoes or... And, the, and this is something that only would be discussed in a minute by minute movie podcast. Cause <laughs> so here he is, right? It's exactly. So fast. It's so fast because we're already we'll move on to a whole other country by the time we get to see Bruce again. So clearly, he's made it out of the village or the the small town that yep. he's been in. He's on this very narrow dirt path. Yep. Another, that is just going through trees. Yeah, more stuff shot in Rio. Another another helicopter shot. So he's off. He's he's on the move. He's on the move. Yeah. And. What happens next? That's what we don't know where he's going. But that's he's how walking. the minute ends. The minute ends with him walking. Yeah. So, in case you're curious, like, uh, what else is going on in the world? Well, it's time for meanwhile in the MCU. So, uh, according to the MCU, okay. So, the, the resource I'm using primarily uh, is uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Fandom They have a exhaustively researched uh, timeline. They even acknowledge, hey, there are some contradictions because. No one in the movie side was really thinking about this stuff when they put these things together. But they have gone through day by day and posted what happens on each day. So uh, they say that from the, the last, uh, from the last minute to this minute, uh, basically five days have gone through. So he apparently lands and wakes up in Guatemala on May 15th, 2010. That's right. They're saying that Iron Man 2 and Incredible Hulk and Thor all take place in 2010. So even though we've been saying 2008 is when the movie came out, shot in 2007, it actually takes place in 2010 because that's when all the other movies are taking place at the same time. From there, it took him five days to get from Guatemala to Chiapas, where he is now. Roughly, that would make sense. Yeah, 250 miles in the mouth. I mean, obviously, mostly walking, maybe hitching rides. Obviously, he was, you know, mostly just wearing pants. Right. So not a lot of people are going to pick him up. Not everybody's going to be as kind as the banana delivery guy. No. (laughs) So that's and so and unfortunately that's pretty much all that's happened so far. But that's interesting in terms of like where it puts it in the timeline of the MCU. That makes it so much more meaningful. Yeah. Especially as you revisit these movies, which right. is the whole again the whole point of why we do this. When you revisit that, and if you know when you're watching Iron Man two now to mm-hmm. understand all these stories and and then. Yeah. It, it gives it even more, I think, power of how then these stories interconnect. Yeah, so, so then somebody, uh, when, they, when they get to do the Iron Man 2 Minute by Minute podcast, mm-hmm. then they can inter- intercut our episodes with theirs where they take place. <laughs> can you imagine if somebody does that? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's something we can talk about uh, how to do on Facebook, oh, he said, wait, making on... a smooth transition. Oh, no, that was nice. That's right. So we uh, ideas like that are something we can talk about over on Facebook because over on Facebook we have our very own group. It's called the Marvel Movie Minute and Next Real Film Podcast Executive Lounge. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. had to put that in because every time you say, I think that's a new thing. Yeah. Every time you say the Marvel the, Movie Minute and Next Real Film Podcast Executive Lounge. Oh, yeah. I can't. No, that's how it is now. 
That's how it's going to be. <laughs> you can find it over at facebook.com slash groups slash the next reel. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate the, the, the hype. There you go. So we hope you had fun listening. Uh, we'll be here to talk about minute 33. I uh, hope you had a smashing good time. Until next time, true believers. Bye. Bye. <laughs>